essentially the behavior was that one of her dogs wasn't accepting or wasn't happy to be around, was fearful around her partner. Now, of course, this created somewhat of an issue because of course she wanted them both to get on. Of course, she wanted her dog not to be worried around her partner. So now the dog's uh, behaviors were vocalization. So turning the emotional energetic charge that was coming up, because don't forget in canine flow, emotions are measurable electromagnetic charges. Okay, the Institute of Heart Math can measure emotions. Different ones give different frequency bands, give different readings. Okay, so the emotional charge that was coming out for this dog led that as a frequency to be expressed as the frequency of sound. And it was a growl. So it was coming from deep within. So that, again, in canine flow is a sign for us to feel and look and see that this is something deep within the owner as well. It's not something surface related. It's not the fact that they just had a little bit of a tiff the day before, or they both have different opinions about one particular thing that keeps coming up, you know? It's, it's something deep within the owner because it's coming from a deep place in the dog. So also turning away, moving away, but watching. You know, that classic thing that dogs do when they have the option, they could just go and get away, but they would rather look and make sure that the thing that doesn't make them feel safe, where is that? How can I, they almost feel safer knowing where it is, you know? It's almost like if you're um, scared of a spider and it's in the room, you'd rather know where it was on the wall than for it to run and hide somewhere. And then you, you have to be in the room with it and you don't know where it is. So we can as humans relate to this kind of emotion as well so that was the behaviors the dog was doing now the thing is in canine flow we of course hey hey three three four of you are now watching you have to say hello to me so i know who you are if you want to so um in canine flow we of course look at things in this three stage way and what my practitioner had struggled with is she'd kind of got stuck in herself wasn't in the flow in one of the ways so i haven't got um i don't you know here i don't even have a teddy bear of a dog isn't that crazy so i'm going to have to do my three-stage flow explanation on uh, a swedish horse <laughs> so i'm going to turn it this way so that i can uh no that way is better i think actually okay so we, of course, in canine flow, we see what is going into the dog emotionally, what is going into the dog energetically, all the different aspects, and there are loads. And when you learn canine flow, you will learn all the different frequency, energetic aspects that are going into the dog. We then look at, obviously, how the dog is at that moment that those things, those frequencies influenced it. Because that can change. There can be some things that stay the same until they're noticed and cleared, or sometimes stay the same in, for the whole of the dog's life. But um, also we will look at uh, the, the momentary, how it was in that moment really is what we really want to be looking at, that, that uh, the frequencies came. And we also look at how the dog is expressing. So as I said before, uh, this particular dog turned um, whatever level of fear it was feeling, because fear isn't just one emotion. There's a whole series, really, if you think about fear, and a whole um, set of levels that the dog can feel that would have different emotional expressions, different emotional and electromagnetic readings and measurements. So we'd be looking at how the dog is expressing that. And in this case, it was a sound vibration and a movement, a little bit of flight involved as well. So um, we know that in terms of what goes in, a large ch chunk of what goes in, in terms of what influences the dog is the owner's stuff. Okay, so this is emotional stuff that is subconsciously felt. It's very, very rarely something that's conscious. Um, it can be, but it's rarely that. It's more what is going on subconsciously. Hey, Emma. Hey, Catherine. 
Hello. So what we say in canine flow is that we work from the heart. Okay, so this means that we will look at how the dog feels in a situation and we will look at what's going on for us in a situation. Now, we learn that we work with the dog's heart and the dog's feelings and the dog's emotional frequencies. But what we have to remember is that when we are thinking about how the, the part of us that's going into the dog and influencing the dog um, is happening, we do not go into a mental analysis of all the crap that is wrong with us. <laughs> okay? And that is so easy to do. It's also pretty comfort zone and which is a shame because it's not very comfortable <laughs> but it is pretty comfort zoney for us to drop back into that oh, okay well I, there's something wrong with me or I can't tell what's wrong with me I have to mentally analyze it until I work out what it is but what that does is it actually gets us stuck in the putting stuff into the dog bit okay so we're not we're not looking at the whole flow of stuff. We can see in terms of the three step analyzing of the dog what's happening with the flow energy. We can see very well stuff's going in, the dog is a certain way, the sound vibration is coming out the other end, and the fear is being felt. But we are not doing canine flow for ourselves. Okay, and the wonderful thing about canine flow is you don't have to know where your stuff comes from. You don't have to analyze where it's from. You don't have to analyze who was to blame. You don't even have to know because you see your habits in the now. And it's that being aware of the habits that is the vital point within canine flow in terms of us as owners. And then what we then teach if we want to to clients um, or people on day retreats or whatever we want to do if we become practitioners. So essentially, we don't need to go backwards. We don't need to analyze mentally. The point of canine flow is to live from the heart, which means you ask the heart. And you will actually get better answers and clearer answers if you drop into your heart. Literally, all it can be when people say things like this is literally being aware of where the heart is in the body. So if I said to you now, be aware of where your foot is, you would know. If I said to you now, be aware of where the crown of your head is, you would know. So you literally drop into your heart. Where is it in my body? And where else am I feeling in the somatic way as well? Where else am I feeling what's happening in my body? So rather than ever analyzing and going, and going into why we feel the way we do, what we possibly are doing wrong, and then down into the spiral of, you know, I'm never going to change this, or uh, it came from that person and I can't change that outside person or that outside situation that happened when I was three years old or whatever it might be that we decide is the, the thing that created it, you know, and, and it can be from past lives and lineages back in our genealogy as well. So it might not even be our stuff. So, you know, it actually almost doesn't matter where it comes from so why I want to talk more about this in terms of this dog and this uh, um, practitioner and her situation that she struggled with is because what happened is in the end the practitioner thought sod it I'm going to just go back to what I originally always used to do with positive dog training and she started to throw treats down between the two of them and the dog very gradually was able to connect with the guy. So first thing I want to say is canine flow never ever says don't do what already works and is kind and positive. What canine flow is about is adding that missing link as to why that worked because we know it didn't work on a, a mental level. Okay so what happens when a dog is um, stuck in its flow or is expressing its flow from a state of fear is they have a need to ingest. So when a dog is expressing its emotional flow, it does it primarily through its mouth, hence the growling as well, because vocalization is led through the mouth as well. No doubt this dog was doing other calming signals like lip licking or something like that. I wasn't 
told everything and it's often it's the little signs we miss anyway but when that dog was able to ingest which basically means taking something into the body whether that's going over to the water bowl or whether that's eating treats that allows the dog to complete its cycle of flow so the energy is grounded okay so it feels this and then the energy is grounded that's why that made a difference now every single creature has the ability and does every time even me talking to you now has an energy exchange okay so that's why it's a little bit weird to do things like videos like this because I currently the only thing that's in front of me I can have an energy exchange is inanimate <laughs> so it's difficult for me to uh, or for anyone doing a, a video to feel and get used to this energy exchange just with comments you know that's why it matters to us so much that you say hi and say your experiences and make your comments about how you feel about what we're saying when we do these videos not just me but anyone that does a live because you're looking for that energy exchange all of us are having this energy exchange and when we're not in the flow and we can't complete that energy exchange whether that's because there's a fear within us in some way subconscious or conscious or we've got something going on that limits or blocks us in some way hi karen then we can feel this as well. We need this, we have this need to ground. So what we do in canine flow is we understand that that dog and the, and the, the reason it ingested and, and the fact it ingested, should I say, meant that it was then able to have and complete that energy exchange. A, it grounded its fear flow, its electromagnetic emotional fear flow and it was able then to connect with that person and have this energy exchange that it had been so worried about having okay so why it matters to know that because it sounds like a um it's maybe complicated and we don't really need to know and all we really need to know about is throwing down treats okay if we just say I'm just going to do the positive dog training thing. Yes, we might initially reach what we want to reach. And in fact, for many, many years, we have achieved what appeared to be the answer by doing positive dog training. And don't get me wrong, I like it if it's kind and nice. And, and I've done it for many years as well. I'm not against it at all. In fact, what I would say is I, I, um, I don't understand where this fear comes from, but if someone's got a new way of doing things or um, an additional way and, and something that's like a missing link way like canine flow, that it can be even thought of that we then suddenly don't do the other stuff. Like, you know, if I've got um, a cold coming on, I don't look in my cupboard and think, right, I'm only going to take vitamin C. I take vitamin C, elderberry, garlic, probiotics. I get it all in me because I want to clear that. You know, I don't go between one or only one of them. So we can integrate this stuff. It's about having the deep understanding of the bigger picture and then integrating the little bits that work for us and the bits we're used to. It's not about saying we're only going to do it this way or we're only going to do that way or there's only one right way. So for me, my aim is to teach you the bigger picture of what's going on emotionally, energetically, because humans are becoming more open we're becoming more energetically transformational if you like we're able to make differences that in the past we haven't been able to do before and our dogs are in front of us to show us stuff so if we're just saying okay i'm just going to throw the treats down this works and that's all i'm going to do we one fundamentally miss what's going on for the dog and we should have more respect for the dog because the dog might have stuff going on in its body even physically that we don't know it might have underlining health problems that we're missing simply because we're covering over the problem with something that appears to work and if the dog is showing behaviors like this it is very very likely to have stuff going on in its body okay now it may be that this isn't veterinary medical stuff necessarily needs to intervene because it's energetic stuff that's coming from somewhere okay so it, that's why it's really important to understand the things that go into the dog that affect the dog emotionally electromagnetically energetically because by changing and transforming them you may very well find that you can change what's going on for the dog so so first, we of course miss what's going on for the dog, which um, I just want to read my notes so I don't forget it. Uh, 
Okay, yes. So, of course, even I nearly forgot the most important bit as well, or as important, should I say, is we are equally as important as the dog. So, by not looking here, okay, and saying, how do I feel? What am I putting into the dog? And I don't mean mentally analyzing, as I've said at the beginning, what's wrong with you, but looking at what's going into the dog and how your exchange is with the person that the dog is worried about without taking that into consideration at all you are doing yourself a disservice your dog is in front of you to help you and support you to balance and move forward from the things that are holding you and limiting you so by not looking at what's going on for us and again, I'll say, just in case anyone jumps on now at any time, I don't mean analyzing. I mean being aware, by not being aware of what's going on for us and changing that, which I'll tell you in a minute how we would do that, or one of the ways, we are doing ourselves a disservice. So it's so important because then we keep putting that back in the dog. So what will happen, because things don't necessarily change for the dog, you're either not aware of what's going on for the dog physically or underlyingly physically, or you're not aware of you, it will start to come out in other behaviors or in other health issues. A lot of emotional issues come out as skin issues. So we have to be aware for what's going on the dog. We can't just keep saying, okay, I'm gonna use this training method because it works. We have to be aware for what's going on with the dog and aware of what emotional energies we are feeling at the time so that we honor the lessons that the dog are giving us um, or dogs are giving us and we make some changes to that now as i mentioned humanity is growing expanding we are ex ascending we are getting more and more powerful if we let ourselves do this and the biggest biggest way of changing something in you without having to go backwards knowing where it came from going into blame is what do I want instead and you switch that powerful focus of yours you switch that visualization of yours you become aware of what's going on in your heart what are you feeling where is it in your body which chakra might need its energy rebalancing or recharging up it's all about what you want and it's not in a selfish way it's about what do i want to be feeling because actually at the root of it all most of us just want to feel more love we want to feel more peace we want to feel uh, perhaps we feel guilty and we want to change that into innocence we don't want to feel the way that we often feel. And we don't wanna analyze where that came from because it keeps us stuck in that. And it's so, so key and it's so, so simple. What do we want? And if we don't know what we want, that's where we have to sit. Think about where our heart is in our body. Ask the heart, what is it you actually want? And you know, sometimes it can be pretty scary to do that because all this stuff can start to come up oh but you can't have that or this you know it just comes up around you comes up in your aura but the thing is we have to stay strong and it's creating that repetitive strength in us that column pillar of light going into the heart and thanking the mind having gratitude for the mind you know changing the things around us that influence us because we can have the three-step process as well we can have things in our environment that are going into us we can have stuff that's wrong if you like that's actually a totally awful word to use really but we can have stuff going on physically for us that is limiting us in some way so we have to look at that as well and it isn't a case of um you know writing down all the problems that we might have it's a case of how can i make some shifts in what's going into me so maybe that's music so so key we already know that music can make us cry can make flow happen because that's all crying is it's flow and it can equally make us feel happy and lifted and we can want to dance and again go into the flow because very often we're stuck in the body and then when we're dancing we're obviously flowing a lot more so you know, there's so much we can do to try and elevate us. And that's what it's all about. And yes, the mind wants to pull you back. Of course it does. And it calls it the comfort zone stuff because that's what you're used to. That's the groove that you've got yourself into. But we don't need to be like that anymore. And we are so supported, so supported by guides, by angels, 
by energies that I'm not even going to go into now because you don't even need to understand what you're necessarily supported by when you first start to do this. So, okay, hopefully that gives you an idea um, of uh, what I mean by it can appear that dogs, dog, positive dog training is actually making a difference, but we need to look at the bigger picture. And another way that you would... Um, so support a dog who is scared or growling at family members this Christmas. Hopefully this video has given you an idea that it's, it is something that's happening within the dog and it's something that's happening with you. So you definitely need to give your dog more space. You, you sometimes, sometimes through intention, through um, dropping into your heart, through creating this visualization of, of light um, and strength. Sometimes those things can work. In fact, another practitioner, I never forget a story she did actually tell us on one of the trainings where somebody who visits, um, the dog didn't like somebody who visits. It wasn't uh, going so far as growling, but would keep very much away. And she shifted, she shifted how she felt about that person and the dog was completely different. However, that person was just visiting very much like would probably happen at Christmas and people just pop around. But um, in the other practitioner's case, of course, the person was there all the time. So it's a little bit more um, challenging for them. But yes, sometimes if you shift, you can use things to shift um, how you feel and that can change the situation. Um, and it does and can happen. I have this happen quite often or people tell me, but I'm not going to say that is going to happen every time. If you pull yourself out of the situation, sit with your dog and meditate, it may not completely change things. But doing this consistency, making very clear what you want over a consistent amount of time and dropping into your heart to shift energy patterns that's going on for you and your dog, it does work and it contributes to the bigger picture in the long term. So what have we got? Rachel says, possibilities and options. That's cool. Don't know if that was reminding me <laughs> that I hadn't really said what they could do, but probably wasn't. Anyway, if you do have um, questions about this, and I'll just re-remind that this was the card that came up at the beginning about love is, uh, love is always the answer. Oh, and it's a dog like um, Rachel that's made the comment actually has. Okay, so this is this is a deep feeling and love, as I say in almost all my videos, I have to remind people it's not about attachment. Okay, the heart feels love and the heart trusts. It's not a mental thing. Okay, any questions about canine flow, about any ways we can help you, um, any ways you want to understand better, any part of canine flow that you want to be part of, I'm happy for and uh, here for you. Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you. See you all again.